Commissioner Baki told media personnel last night that the directorate will remain closed until he sees accountability in the directorate. I am now exercising my powers under Section 153 of the Police Force Act that I am directing a temporary closure of the National Fraud and Anti-Corruption Office. After the National Court decision was handed down by Justice Alan David, locks at the National Fraud and Anti-Corruption Directorate building were changed to prevent any fraud members from accessing the building. Well, in, on the interim basis, I'm, I'm happy with, the, with, with the, the decision of the court. The suspension means all fraud offices will report directly to the Assistant Crimes Commissioner, Victor Isove, who is the second defendant in the matter currently before the courts. All the officers of the fraud and anti-corruption squad will report to the Assistant Commissioner Crimes. Baki explained that Damaru was suspended because of an unsanctioned fraud investigation which was conducted into the Eastern Highlands and Simbu Provincial Administrations. However, Damaru's lawyer Greg Egan informed the National Court yesterday in an ex parte proceeding that Crimes Commissioner Victor Isove had authorized the trip when he signed the invoice for the four investigators directing the Police Finance Department to release over 300,000 kina for their travel allowance. Baki claimed that the Eastern Islands Provincial Executive Council had approved more than 1.5 million kina for fraud investigators to investigate the provincial administrator of Eastern Islands, Solomon Tato. I want accountability. That's what I'm talking about. When you get in there and you sit in there, you're accountable to the commissioner. Today they're not doing all these things. They're doing things outside, completely outside. And it is worth for you to know that I have a very strong belief that the fraud squad is actually being funded outside. And I made it clear yesterday when I made a statement about the Eastern Islands provincial government. It's under scrutiny right now. On the other hand, there's a court order in place that restrains police commissioner or any RPNGC member to interfere with fraud offices from performing their duties. Bucky said he will get his lawyers to check the legal process used in obtaining the state order, as this is the first of its kind. I'm also giving directions under, under the provisions of Section 136 of the Police Force Act to look at the conduct of those two lawyers including Mr. Damaru and any other members of the fraud squad, whether their conduct that amounts to causing disaffection in the organization. And if it does, I will have no hesitation to direct that they will be charged accordingly. Meanwhile, the substantive matter on the power of the commissioner to terminate or suspend a police officer will be debated in court on May 9th. Tekla Gunga, National MTV News.